So it's the next day. Subaru Outback is now in my shop, so we can take our time with it, play around with it, and see what's going on with this accelerator pedal position sensor. My neighbor actually drove it over here this morning. He said it drove perfect, no hiccups, no issues. So, okay, it's an intermittent problem. Uh, you know, if it's still there. The check engine light's back on. So, first thing we want to do is scan it again, see if that same code set, and, you know, after a key cycle, maybe it, now it's feeling better again. So, here's the code. A P0037. Ah, oh, I was disappointed. Heater control circuit low, bank one, sensor two. Shucks. <laughs> Now, obviously the main drivability complaint would have to do with the accelerator pedal position sensor. It only, it's only happened once, and the only correlation there is to anything, you know, in the environment is it was raining the previous two days before that morning when it actually acted up. So my game plan is to pull up some wiring diagrams, pull up the description for this code on all data, and see if there's any anything at all that could potentially be an intermittent like water intrusion in a connector something along those lines we'll hook up the Pico right to the pedal position sensor um, you know there's two of them and we don't know how they're wired so again going by the diagram we'll check the, the feed the, the signal circuit the grounds try to make this thing act up and see if we can make heads or tails out of it. All right, first thing we want to do is check the heater circuit on the downstream oxygen sensor. Lives right there, accessible. And 29.8 kilo ohms. Yeah, the heater's burned out, so no big deal. It just needs a new sensor downstream. Check out the Fluke 325. I finally upgraded my amp clamp from the Craftsman. This thing is nice. It measures the current, it's stable. That's what I really want it for. The only thing I don't like is when you go to volts, it defaults to AC, so you need to press AC DC, make sure you're in DC volts. Could be mis misleading, I don't know why it defaults to AC, kind of silly, but um, that's just the way it is. Anyways, it needs a new O2 sensor. Now, let's go look up some service information on that accelerator pedal position code. All right, we're on all data. Got our vehicle pulled up. Let's look at the P2138 trouble code description. Throttle pedal position sensor switch DE voltage correlation. So we have the regular engine. Here's our wiring diagram. Accelerator pedal position sensor. Six wires total, the main and the sub. And then we have the ECM. Again, no wiring colors on Subaru diagrams, and it doesn't tell you which one's which. Ground, <clears throat> power, signal. Well, we can tell that the signal wire is the middle one. That's the one with the little arrow. But powers and grounds, not sure. What do we do from here? This is a flow chart. I'm not a huge fan of flow charts, especially Subaru flow charts. I mean just so many steps to do basic electrical checks we don't need that we just need a good diagram and connector locations so you can see there there are no intermediate connectors for these wires here between the ECM and the position sensor however for these side wires well, let's see Actually, see B122, that's just the shield wire for the signal. Not too worried about that. However, this guy, B83, is a jumper, and it actually goes to pin 6 on our sub sensor. B83, what is that? <clears throat> so, it's pin number 6 on... B315 and pin 30 on the ECM B30 okay and B135 pin 30 
So we can kind of go by the flow chart and just see what these pins refer to. Uh, harness, harness check, resistance, they should do resistance checks, this is silly. And why does my scroll stop working, I don't know. Anyways, we need to be 100% sure of what these pins are. We need to label them, and print this guy out, and what is this B83? That is... It looks like a junction connector somewhere in the side. See where it, where it lives because, again, we're suspecting an intermittent problem just because it rained. You know, which connectors here are susceptible to water intrusion? Something maybe in like the door jam area, possibly. So let's, uh, let's do a little more research. Hey, we got our new oxygen sensor. Right from Fisher Auto Parts, they delivered it in like 10 minutes. Had it in stock. Awesome. And as a bonus, we get another Denso anti-seize packet. I love these things. They last and last and last. Let's just double check the resistance on the new sensor. And it comes with a little clip. Looks like OEM stuff. Even comes with anti seize on the sensor. They even give you a packet too. Love it. Let's see. Resistance. Get rid of that glare. And we'll just check the two black wires here and here. Oh, come on. Five point two ohms. I like it. We got some continuity. Now let's try to get this old one out. So it's down there. You can get it. Probably get it from the bottom if you remove the splash shield. But we're gonna try from the top. Long extension with three eighths inch drive extendable ratchet. Let's see if it cracks it loose. Something break, or did we succeed? <laughs> you never know. Oh, come on. Yes, success. Love it. When something snaps like that, you never know <laughs> if it's your extension snapping or your ratchet or if you actually got the part out. There she is. Nothing to it. Pop a new guy in. And at least that code should be solved. All right, we're twerking at the spec. I like it. That's all there is to it. Plug and play. Feed the wire up. Clip her in. Brand new, awesome. All right, so let's do some digging online and see what kind of checks we can do on this accelerator pedal position sensor and if we can track down the problem. I took it for a couple test drives, no issues. So this might be a very intermittent problem, it might depend on the ambient temperature, temperature inside the car. Uh, all kinds of variables here, and if it only happens, you know, it's happened once, and 
if, it's, if it happens like once a month, we're going to be kind of spinning our wheels here, but we still need to give the customer a reasonable, you know, hypothesis of what it might be and kind of tell them what the best course uh, to take is to fix this problem because he wants his car to be reliable, obviously. So step one, let's figure out which wire is which. We have six wires, two feeds, two grounds, and two signal wires. Obviously Subaru does not label colors or you know the actual uh, you know what each wire is responsible for. So we can go to our various component test meter and here we at least have pin assignments and what each wire does. So pin 1 is sensor 2, 5 volt reference, that's key. Sensor signal for number 2, then 5 volt reference for number 1, uh, the ground for number 1, the signal for number 1, and finally the ground for number 2. So they're not, they're kind of mixed up here, but uh, we still don't know the wiring colors. For that we can go to the non-OE diagram. Here's our APP. Again, pins labeled and colors. So putting all of the pieces of the diagrams together, which is kind of silly, they should all be on one, but we have the color and the wire function. So sub is number two, main is number one, feed, ground, and signal for each one, and what do we want to do? Well, obviously we're worried about the signals, that's what the computer is fussing about. So I want to hook up the Pico, channel one will be on the main signal wire, pin five black, Channel 2 on the red signal wire for the secondary sensor. And we'll just plot them, maybe overlay them, and see, you know, play around the gas pedal, see if they're always in line uh, without any discrepancies. Also, key to note here, the DC voltage test, what should these values be? Right here, with key on engine off, key on engine run, voltage should be about 1.0 volts with throttle closed and increase smoothly to 3.5 volts at wide open throttle. So they should be exactly the same. That's what the uh, information says. So let's, um, let's hook, this, hook up the scope, play around with this thing, and then if we can't get it, then can't reproduce it, might have to do a little more digging, like is this a common problem? Uh, see what other people have done and go from there. All right, for convenience, I have a breakout box hooked up to the data link connector. And so we can hook up both our scope and we have a known good ground right here for our scope. And two channels going up to the accelerator pedal position sensor. Now I used piercing process. I don't want to disturb the connector just in case there's a problem there. And we're gonna measure blue is the main signal, red is the secondary signal. So let's boot up the Pico, go file, connect device. Yep, Pico scope, okay. So far I love this uh, new tablets. Pico scope has no problems with it, so it wasn't a wiring problem with the USB cable, it's just tablet couldn't send enough power to it or something. So let's do plus or minus 5 volts here, and we'll do plus or minus 5 volts on channel B. And I want to keep them on the same axis, so I turn the key on. It's at one volt now. What's wrong with our red signal? Let me uh, double check the wiring here. There we go. So they're both at one volt. And on the scanner, I also want to see scan data. See if everything agrees. And here we can actually turn down our Time base, let's do two seconds per division so it's a little slower going across the screen. You know, we press the gas pedal. We should both go up at exactly the same time. Drop down at the same time.
All right, it looks good. And we'll just take it for a test drive. And I hope we can reproduce it because, you know, maybe he started it on a cool morning and it happened. And, you know, if, if it's warm right now, we'll never get it to act up. I wouldn't be that surprised. The only problem here is when you're communicating with the uh, cart, you get a lot of noise on the scope. We can actually we can filter that out, but you know we still want to catch any glitches. So engine continue. You know, you'll see once it starts talking. Throw all the control data. There you go. Uh, so you get kind of a noisy picture. Can we filter that out? Let's see, active filtering. Now the filtering I think only works when the screen fills up and then it like, <laughs> you see it filtered it there. So that's not gonna work. Or, we can just not look at the scan data and the scope should tell us everything. If the signal is messed up here, then you know, we'll know for sure what happened. But if, even if we do sub and main, main and sub, 1.1, 1.2, Three point four, three point five. There's like a one, 0 0.1 volt difference usually. You see the red's a little higher than the blue at all times. Right now it's 1.1 1 .1 and 1.2. So let's exit out of here so we get a nice clean signal. And I'll take it for a spin. Not seeing any issues yet, it's driving perfectly. So kind of what I expected, you know, took it around the block, no, no problems. It's gonna be a waste of time trying to get this thing to act up. I think a more productive thing to do would be you know, shut the car off and just play with the gas pedal and kind of, you know, by hand and see if there's any glitching at all. Those potentiometers in there, I mean, 170,000 miles, it's it's a wear and tear item. It's a mechanical piece, so it wouldn't be that surprised. We'll go online, see if other people had this issue, but, you know, right now it's, it's doing great. All right, key on, engine off. Let's look at the scope. I'm gonna wiggle the connector up there at the pedal position sensor. See if you have any sort of glitches or, I mean the connector is definitely plugged in just fine. Can't pull it off. What if you go like this? Hmm, not much you can do there. So, I think that's, that's about it in terms of trying to get it to act up. As a preventative measure, we can take off the connector, spray all the deoxid in there, put it back on, but you're gonna have to go online and see what, you know, if other people have been having this problem because usually 
you know, on any car, <laughs> you're going to have a, a, you know, if it's a common problem, then you might as well uh, not reinvent the wheel. Looking at the connector itself, yeah, it looks pristine. Didn't think we'd see any green crusties up in this dry area. So, no sense in going too far with that. Did the wiggle check? Did that check? Let's see here. They're both good. Yeah. My hand. I think I think that's it for uh, testing. All right, real quick, I just want to double check these grounds. We're using a baby 150 milliamp test light. Not going to hurt any sensor grounds with high current. So whenever this pin finds a ground, it'll light my light. So if we touch the pin number six. Nice light, and pin number four, nice light, not worried about grounds. That's it for electrical testing. All right, typed in Subaru P2138, and all you see is accelerator pedals. Well, that's a good sign. <laughs> um, Drive-by-wire by throttle control technology, whole bunch of forum posts, so it's not a rare problem. Uh, just cleaning or reading some of these. This guy, I've had zero problems after replacing the pedal assembly. And yeah, I went through a few of these, and it seems like sometimes the problem is very intermittent. Sometimes it happens when it's a really cold morning, you turn the heater on, the hot air blows on the sensor, and then the little potentiometer, whatever, springs get messed up or start shifting a little bit. So yeah, this was. I think the first year of Subaru using the electric or electronic throttle control technology and I've read that they actually upgraded the pedal position sensor from kind of an old school potentiometer to a Hall effect sensor where there are no moving parts to wear out like little sliders. So yeah, I'm just going to say, you know, drive it, kind of keep in mind if it happens, pull over, shut your engine off, restart it. Should be okay for a while, but at this point it needs a new accelerator pedal position sensor. The old one, you can't take it apart, and this is a real safety issue item. So in this case, OEM only, and yes, some parts are required, even though you know I like to get in there and tear them apart and try to fix them, but in this case, you know that is a bigger liability issue. You don't want anyone to be in an intersection, lose their throttle. That is not a good scenario. So we're just gonna look up the you know prices. I think it's around 200 bucks. Uh, order him a new one if he wants to put it in and go from there. But that's it for the Diag. Kind of kind of a bummer we couldn't reproduce it, but kind of had a feeling that if it's that intermittent, uh, we weren't gonna see it on the scope. But thanks all for watching, and see you guys next time. Bye bye.